good fat on yours, and I've got more hair on you. Okay. But hey, this is sort of the buttercup. Okay. I seen your post on Facebook. Yeah. The dancer is just thinking you're an all and you need to pipe down a little bit. You know? I'm only, only trying to help people. No, I don't think you're helping people. You're pissing people off, so can't be doing that. You need to pipe down a little bit. It's too much. Um, no, that, I'm no nothing that. else than that. That's it. Just pipe down. Welcome back, guys. I'm Robbie Butler. And I'm Morty. And together we are. Mind your Mind your Bob. First time that time. First yeah. time, and not only that, that was the left hand. That's my first time with the left hand. We've mixed it up a little bit, haven't we? We're, we're, Change you know, sides. We are really radical because we mixed it up this week. I went to this side, did you see that? <laughs> did you notice that? I went to this side, you went to that side. Yeah, feels a bit strange. <laughs> Marty, we, yeah. there, was a wee, there was a wee clip that they just saw just before we started, and yeah. you were giving me a hard time. Do you want to tell them what it was about? Basically just trying to relate with people, you know, again, if that happens in life, you know, mm. uh, just showing what goes on, and again, basically, not putting Robbie in his place, that's the wrong way to say it, but... you you're not big enough. I'm not big enough, yeah, so he tells me, wee man syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, it's just basically, again, just showing like a, a normal situation that may be happening in the workplace, or in school, or whatever it may be, if somebody maybe cut mm. me off, but just a wee bit aggressive in it, what do you think? So, I had to do it. Yeah, certainly aggressive. We were role playing. Yeah. And I was listening to it and it was, because I knew what was going on. I was thinking, uh, in the context of if that was normal life, that would be bullying. Yeah. I think that would be bullying. And we've all got different filters and different attitudes and different uh, abilities to uh, deal with issues and pressure like that yeah. from either colleagues, family, friends, or strangers. Yeah. But this is uh, National Bullying Week. It starts tomorrow. So today is November the 11th. Tomorrow. National Bullying Week, there's going to be a lot of stuff uh, about uh, social media and yeah. hopefully it'll be carried on the news and there'll be a lot of literature, hopefully in schools and stuff, but bullying is very, very real today in 2018. Especially on the social media side of things, yeah. Robbie. Um, yeah. You see, I don't know about you, you see a lot of even me sniggly comments and you just don't know how somebody feels behind the phone. They might be sitting hurting mm -hmm. with something you've said and you don't even realise it. So yeah. it's kind of like it is, it's good as we can sort of make a bit of awareness for this. What do you think? So social media, um, social media is one of those places where bullying is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely out there. And social media is good. So yeah. sure, you're watching this video on YouTube. It's being hosted through the, you're picking up through the internet, yeah. possibly through Facebook, something like that. So this is hopefully where social media is used in its best form, uh, for maybe to help people, to educate people, to even just share experiences. Yeah. Um, but I think before we get into the, the technicalities of it, I think maybe we'll look at a, a definition of bullying. Okay. Um, I'm going to read this one out, and then you, maybe you could give me a, what you think might be a, a Lisburn version or Northern Ireland, <laughs> no, an Ulsterized version. Yeah, of bullying. Of okay. <laughs> so we, we've we've grabbed this from an online dictionary somewhere. Yes. Okay. Um, bullying is to use superior strength or influence to intimidate someone typically to force them to do something for example a local man was bullied into helping them um i think that's a it's a very uh, soft way of, of describing the actual uh, outworkings of bullying uh, and the outcomes and sometimes the outcomes can be absolutely tragic the can of deed actually yeah. i'm trying to think about something on that note mm -hmm. um, Intimidation as well, you know, Northern Ireland doesn't really, no. so we well, can't be quite intimidating. Um, <laughs> and the yeah. yeah, just, um, it's probably appropriate for what we're talking about here. What do yeah. you think? Well, I think what we'll do is, what we can do this this week, we're going to yeah. talk about bullying in its various stages. Yeah. And I think the easiest way for us to do that is to think about bullying from when you're at your youngest yeah. and, and possibly your most vulnerable. Um, and so you're, uh, we'll cover maybe the bullying in school yeah. uh, and then we'll work from there. I mean, you're, you're a big lad. You're, you're a big. Someone asked me this week, Marty, do you know Marty from he used to play football at Downshire? He was a handy footballer. Yeah. And my response to him was, he looks like a big lad. I couldn't imagine that big fella charging about the field. They said, <laughs> they said that you actually were a good footballer, yeah. uh, and you, but you've always been probably a big, big enough guy, have you? I'm a day, yeah. And do you have any experiences of putting as as a young person? Young person, Tom, before we even go there, mm -hmm. um, I was kind of always wary, was a term I was always used to get about me. I've sort of. Mm -hmm. I about 25 I started going to the gym so I got, I got broader initially mm -hmm. but I'm sorry I got a comment and made me laugh some guy mm -hmm. said something on the line basically playing football and he says me shut up fat boy and this way I'd be fine once me you know we had to say it's just like what the yeah. hell you know it just can't work out way you want to sort of insult me like that but anyway it's an it's way goes. Like it. it is but I mean coming up maybe in regards to want to maybe stick to the football in terms of like I was quite skinny and wary but you just you just, all the time people talking down mm -hmm. you know as a kid I took football pretty serious just talking down your ability to play football, maybe you know. I was used to that, I wasn't very good. No, yeah. you had, and you've been getting me stick the last couple of weeks, so what's that about? It's probably better than you. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's just you know, in school growing up, you're always you know, you're not comparing yourself, I suppose, but you're always kind of thinking you're finding your feet, aren't you, through life? So mm -hmm. if somebody's telling you a 
I can't really say something about you know maybe your ability to do something. You will take it and you will find maybe you are the right. So, any experiences yourself on that note? I do. Uh, I do. I think um, before we get into the modern context of bullying and what constitutes bullying, yeah. um, I, I would say that uh, in in high school especially, I did suffer from bullying. Now, okay. I'm not very big now, five foot eight. Some people would argue they're not even five foot eight. <laughs> I am five foot eight. But when I was in high school, uh, this was high school, which was an old boys' school, yeah. um, back in the eighties, mm-hmm. I was particularly small. I was I was extra small, and I was also as I am now, I was a, I was a Christian, okay. and and uh, I was probably like I'm like a wee bit of a cheeky chappy, and I didn't yeah. mind letting people know. Yeah. But what I found was if you were different in any way, so. Um, I was different because I was a Christian. Yeah. Um, there were guys there who were different maybe because they were uh, bigger, some of you. Okay. Some people wore glasses, some people had ginger hair, some people had long hair, some people had short hair. Yes. But if you stood out for being different for any reason, generally, you you opened yourself up maybe to being bullied. Yeah. Um, we see it very much in the context today, especially in around the LGBT, yeah. uh, with that community and, right. and horrendous acts of bullying. But what I would say to anybody when I'm talking to them, generally you're not getting bullied because of the issue, it's because you're different and because you're prepared to stand up for something. And there's an ignorance in people which is sad to see. So I was bullied back in school for being a Christian. Okay. And the bullying took the form of uh, name calling. Okay. Uh, it took the form of getting kicked, okay. punched, spat at. Now, I'm not going to say that I was pasted up and down the corridor. Yeah. It was never, there was probably never going to be bones broken, but I'll tell you what, you felt it. Yeah. Uh, and it got to the point where, um, uh, as a group, there was about six of us met in a room and we locked the door. Yeah. We actually had to lock, physically lock the door and keep the, the boys on the other side of the door. Yes, um, and, and the thing was, at, at times you were going into school petrified. Yeah. You, you genuinely had a fear of going into school, which actually has an effect on your education. Yeah. Uh, it has an effect on your friendship groups. Yeah. Um, your ability to communicate um, uh, and and even travelling to and from school became yeah. an issue because you were thinking I'm going to have to avoid certain streets because someone lives there someone plays there so, I'm, that's so you're taking and, that, and that's not you know as a kid as well you know you're thinking, you just want to live free don't you you, know, you, don't, you never think about like a territorial sort of situation yeah. so Again, you're walking from a state to a state wondering, will you bump into these mm-hmm. kids? And that, that would be terrifying. And those are, those are in your formative <laughs> years. That's yeah. when you're developing your resilience, yeah. um, your stickability to do things. And uh, you also really are, are, are forming opinions of people. Yeah. So I, I know who those bullies were. I can remember them. I know their names. I can remember them. Yeah. And I see them now. Yeah. And some of them are, are very nice people. But I still have the thought back, would you believe yeah. me? You yeah. know, when, when you when you stuck about in me or when you had to walk the, from the front of the bus to the back of the bus yeah. and you got kicked from pillar to post, yeah, it's like really. an initiation, totally wrong. Yeah. You're watching this video and you bullied me, I'm coming to get you. Uh, <laughs> Send me again. <laughs> I sat in the big morning. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> um, but no, on that note, sorry, Robbie, um, yeah. talking back to my experiences in school, I went to Lord Hill Community College um, and we were kind of... Uh, I don't know, I was quite fortunate the class I was in. Everybody was quite together. I don't really recall any bullying circumstances in our class. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was couple, maybe again, it became the P, and again, people are more gifted in other areas than the other people. So again, you might be good at P, but you might be that good at school. So likewise, yeah. so people come into P, we bit sort of, we bit worried about how they're going to get on, we bit embarrassed maybe about their bodies mm-hmm. as well, like getting changed. So we actually would have picked guys first a wee bit less ability, not in a nasty way, but it would have been more to make them feel welcome. And actually now that's thinking amazing, back, I actually really, that was I actually really appreciate the lads doing that because at the time of the spot, we just liked them. You know, yeah. we're just friends and you're like, pick them and make them feel welcome. But now as you really realise that that was actually, as being kids was actually nice, you know. That's a, that's a really interesting mm-hmm. moment because we all see it when our football teams are being yeah. picked or I remember in sports day, I'd have been one of the last to get picked because okay. it was never fast. And I'm going to remember the feeling that you have and you, yeah. know, you know you're not going to get picked. Yeah. And um, now, part of, I'm not, uh, I'm not totally left field here. I'm not saying that you always have to go in, but it's a bit mixing it up, I think. Yeah. Because there is an ability in life and there is a, there is a competitiveness in life which yeah. you have to equip young people with. You have yeah. to, um, you know, that's life. You yeah. know, there's going to be competition for jobs. There's going to be competition of opportunity at the university. You're going to have to work yeah. hard. But there is that lovely soft side too where you can encourage somebody to be better by yeah. pick, pick, perhaps even picking them. Yeah. Just picking them in the team and because to get picked first, second, third instead of tenth every time yeah. can make such a difference. It can indeed. And, fundamental, yeah. and even listening to a couple of kids that I'm sort of going up in around now, even mm-hmm. listening to them and they're asking me about my experiences, football, whatever it may be, they're sort of saying, you know, uh, when you were a kid, when would you have been picked again? And I actually got asked that question the other day and I was kind of like, it's not all about that. Or if you're not good at that, you'll be mm-hmm. better. You know, I was a kid I was talking about, it's funny, and he was, I was saying about football, and he was saying about he likes dodgeball. 
I don't know if dodgeball is good as well. I don't know about you, but he was like, I'm better at dodgeball than I am at football. Yeah. I was like, so when it comes around to me and playing dodgeball, yeah. yeah. So don't be taken out the heart. You're not going to be good at that, but you're good at that. You know? yeah. So you can actually, if you can try and improve a little bit yeah. and just focus on what you're good at. Okay. That's how you're going. Just just before we move on, yeah. just going to point out, running from that side to this side, we're going to have a number of <laughs> links and yes. pieces of literature for you to read on bullying. Okay, so there'll be a number of things running through here. Um, click the link and we'll, we'll paste them in below as well so you, you, there is, there's good literature out there on yeah. terms of bullying. Now, so that's the, the traditional bullying, we're all sort of aware, we're yeah. not accepting of it but we know what happens in schools and, yeah. uh, and there are things that, that, that young people need to be equipped with and, and also teachers need to be aware of. But this is the thing, bullying exists probably throughout your life. It does. Even in the workplace as an adult uh, and, and, it, and it can be... It, 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 it's, 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 Pretty, pretty horrendous, even I think with adults, you know, yeah. who should know better, uh, whether it's a boss or a, or a work colleague. Yeah, you know, I've got an experience to share on that actually. When I left school, my wee mother was all about getting a, get a trade. What are you going to do with your life? You know, that usual, just that's just old school, if you ask me. Go to yeah. shipyard. Yeah, you know, get a trade. <laughs> I was like, right, I'll try my comedy. Didn't like it. Was, yeah. I'm not good with my hands. I know this now, but back then I was like, okay, I'm not good with my I'll try someone else. I went to plumbing. Same again, just didn't enjoy it, didn't enjoy the atmosphere, the, all the cold mornings, whatever it may be at the time. And then I went, finally went to join me, and this was for me, my last straw, this new thing, this is the last chance to learn if this doesn't work, I'm moving on. And the place I went to, actually, I mm -hmm. feel like I got picked on in a sense, because mm -hmm. I'm quite a cheeky chubby too. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes at me with a. From the bottom of the couch, it should have to be. <laughs> somebody comes at me with a bit of thunder, as they yeah. were calling it, I would react, you know? Yeah. And again, easy target, easy target. Just kept going on and on at me. I'll be honest with you, I went on for about six, seven months. And I ended up breaking it. I did it really? Honestly, I'm sorry. Yeah, well. I ended up, I said, you know what? I actually went to my mum and I says, I'm not good at this for a start, right? Maybe that's why I picked on me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's just more that, it's just like, why do they, they keep picking on me? So one of the mum says, listen, I was only a 17 kid here, 18 maybe. Uh, why are they picking on me? Mm -hmm. So next thing, I kind of went and spoke to my tag teacher, just said, I don't think this is for me. Told them my experiences, and they actually pulled me out of the job and said, this isn't for you. So I didn't get relocated in the end. I ended up dropping out of the joinery side of things, which was now a heavens, to be honest with you. Um, but at the same time, I see it as an experience. Going to another workplace, it was actually quite terrifying because it was my first sort of experiences of the working world. And I was like, if this is the way this is, I'm going to drown, you know what I mean? Oh. So the only experience is yourself. But I should say that, so it seems to be a bit like confession time, okay? Yeah. So I haven't shared this too widely. And it's not that I keep it a big secret, but, uh, um, I was a wee bit ashamed of it at the time because I was, I was 28. Yeah. 28. I'd already held out a number of good jobs. So I was just new into the fire service and uh, I was on a watch. Uh, Belfast, fantastic yeah. watch. Old school. Yeah. Old school. Very, very traditional yeah. uh, rough and tumble firefighters and they're all guys at this stage on this particular watch. And there was an issue with the, there's a guy there and, and I'm going to say now, I don't think he is, he is a traditional British, so I'm not going to say he is. What, yeah. what I'm going to say is how he treated, he was a big guy. Yeah, but how he treated people like me and, and another other couple of people in the watch was not right. Yeah. Okay? Now, what happened was there was other things going on in my familial circle. Okay, so I was probably at that stage under a little bit of pressure. Okay. Certain other things that were going on. But what was happening? So I wasn't getting any break from the pressures outside of work. I was going into work and I was dreading going in because this guy uh, was able to use his physical presence, his experience yeah. to belittle the new guys. Yeah. Uh, like me and some other guys. Now, what I did do was, which was the right thing to do. Yeah. Well. There's two ways of doing it. You can either go to the bully and you can confront them, which I chose not to do. I went to the boss okay. and asked the boss to address it. Now, the boss did address it. Whether he addressed it appropriately or yeah. not is debatable, but it, listen, it dealt with the situation yeah. uh, in a way. The guy just decided he wouldn't speak to me anymore. He didn't get into yeah. trouble, but it did stop. Yeah. This is the interesting thing about it. Um, there was another guy who was being bullied even more. Yeah. And I approached the guy who was being bullied more and I said, Look, this is what I've done. Do you want to say anything? Do you really want to know? Yeah. He says, I, I, I don't like it, but I'm not yeah. prepared to say anything. And uh, that was, that was I thought, well, that's okay. It was his, his, his right to yeah. uh, decline that, that offer. Um, but listen, it was dealt with, and, and you don't have to put up with it. Banter and crack. Listen, I would get to work in uh, an environment where you didn't have <laughs> banter and crack. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but I think there's, well, bullying is absolutely not acceptable in any form. Yeah. We have to know who we're working with and before we enter into those um, conversations or the crack or the banter, we need yeah. to know and be comfortable because everybody's di different boundaries. Correct. Different sensitivities and it's important that, you know, before you engage in that sort of 
tit, you know, that sort of... Yeah, tit for tat a sense in it, you know, but again, their main pet hate is seeing personal attacks on people. Yes. They just can't work out what people get from it. Yeah. And if somebody, you know, again, as I said, you just don't know what somebody's thinking. Yeah. Behind that phone, if it's still on social media or whatever, but it's just, I don't get where the place is for personal attack on people, you know, about no. how they look, etc. I just think there's no place for that, you know. And I, it's not bothered for me, I don't think it's... What do you think about that? I'm a father, you know. Well, uh, I, I would say, and, and whilst this isn't a political video, I have yeah. to use what I see in the political sphere because it's a, it's a, it's a big one. You, yeah. you see, um, uh, I'll not mention names here, but you've seen a lot of, uh, on Twitter especially, um, yeah. a lot of like, misogyny. Uh, you, see, uh, so you see a lot of the political leaders um, getting being a, a personal attack on them. Now, whilst they may not share a lot of the ideologies yeah. of a lot of politicians, I'm, I'm mature enough to know that of a different dependence, and yeah. you know, that's, that's, I have to suck some stuff up, correct? As do they, but what, and, and I don't mind having a political argument and a political disagreement yeah. with either a party or uh, an ideology. Um, what I do struggle with and what I don't like is when it becomes personal, yeah, it, now, exactly. That. There are a lot yeah. of politicians that will do that, there are a lot of commentators that will do that, and people would say, But that's politics, and I'm saying, no. Actually, no. no, no, there's no book that says this is the way politics has to be or life has to be. Let's write the book on politics, let's write the book on life. Yeah. Um, let's build resilience in the people. Let's create an environment where um, uh, that you, you define the boundaries within the group of people you're with and you yeah. operate within there. And if somebody doesn't like something, well, here's the thing, you don't do it. Yeah. Then you don't say it. Um, so I think that's just, that's roughly where that needs to be. And I think we need to, we'll kill the politics because I don't want this to turn <laughs> into a, a political issue. Um, yeah. But it exists. And yeah. On every platform and in every and in every forum, it does. We, we touched on online stuff, Marty. I want to say that actually is online as well. And um, do you ever see anything again? You're talking about your Twitter there. Mm -hmm. Do you ever just scroll up and down your Facebook every you time, sort of a little bit of time? Do you ever just see anything and think, wow, you know, what's that about? I, I tell you what, yeah, I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see there's 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 a real I think where where it exists here mm -hmm. is where social media has been allowed to become a component part of life where people yeah. believe that everything on there is the gospel, that it's yeah. the truth, that it's real. <coughs> and that therein lies the biggest difficulty. The good thing about social media is you can turn it off. Yeah. And, and we need to, I need to, and you need to, and you guys out there need to, if you're being bullied on social media or if it's becoming a problem, hit the off switch. Hit the block button, hit the mute button, whatever it is, because you don't have to take it and we don't need to live our lives in that bubble of social media. We talked about it even this last few weeks about yeah. friends, not followers. Yeah. Your friends ain't going to bully you if they're real friends. Correct, and they'll stand by you too. And they'll stand by you. So yeah. if that's happening, they're not your friend. Okay. Yeah. And follow them. If you don't want to unfriend them and you know that offends people now, it doesn't uh, they friends away. Uh, you just, just unfollow them and that's uh, Absolutely. And there's a ridiculous thing happening on, on, on Twitter. You can see people are now putting up who's blocked me. As a, as a badge of honour, look who's blocking me now. I would say, well, they're probably blocking you because you were. Yeah. I'm not going to say, but it could be, you, obviously, they don't either. You're either giving them a hard time or whatever. Yeah. Blocking is fine. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I've been blocked probably too, talking football with people. <laughs> Every Sunday for me is a heated day. Man United fans all know that. Who wants this? I have no Man United fans. Watch <laughs> this, by the way. You're blocked. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Champions League day, funny enough, United. Do you remember United just lost to Chelsea? I think it was, uh, it was this year. Mm -hmm. I, I give United fans a hard time. Is it a good beat? All over them, and to say this day, I was like, Cup finals are hard enough, yes. get beat. Oh, they are. I'll leave them. We do that 100%. Uh, one week later, who gets beat? Liverpool, Liverpool. Real Madrid, yeah. and I got slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, did, did. you should have deserved it. <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest, I sort of this was my me just a man, probably not just a man at all. And um, because I didn't get because I didn't get stick on the Saturday, they got beat in the FA Cup final. I was like. Lay off me. They're like, you're not the only Liverpool fan on my Facebook. <laughs> yes, you take it personal. <laughs> I was getting messages from United fans saying to me, you need to calm down. Because I was getting involved, you know, and there was there, a few heads going here, yeah. just went. Exactly. <laughs> Money, you've, you've just yeah. talked on something which I think we need, to, we, we need yeah. to just share here, we need to talk about. So, bullying exists, okay? Yeah. People can bully you. But if someone puts a post up and you're not actually named on it, yeah. you, shouldn't, and you shouldn't be taking offence and assuming it's about you. I think we all do that, don't we? Sense. We do. You, you wonder. Yeah. As you said, you saw this thing. You'd been at the Man United supporter. Somebody put something up and you thought it was about you, but it wasn't. They've got three thousand other friends or five hundred other friends that are Liverpool supporters. Well, exactly that. And, and so let's not assume offence unless it's absolutely directed at us um, and be able to shake that off. Um, the last thing I want to talk about about bullying is why do people bully? Yeah. What what is a bully? Yeah. Um, could be many things, could it really? Maybe experiences at home that we don't see again. 
and uh, probably not happy. I've, I always wrote it down to if somebody says something to me personally, they're maybe not happy with themselves mm -hmm. and what way, what things are going on in their life. I don't think they're they're content with what they have or whatever it may be. I just think, and that's the way it comes out. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of that's kind of me being an okay in my mind. But what do you think? Okay, um, uh, as someone who was bullied, I don't think bullied people bully. If okay. understands. I don't think, I don't know, I've nothing to back this up, it's just yes, as, someone, it's as someone who, who was bullied and, and, and felt the pain of it and the isolation and all of those things that go with it, uh, I was never going to bully, I hope, yeah. now, the two people that work in here, Nicky and Tim, might say I bully them regularly, but I, don't I, just, as well. I just prod them with a stick a little bit to get them to do a bit of work, yeah. um, and, and, and when I was a manager in the fire service and stuff, I, I hope I never had a reputation for anything other than um, bringing the team on. Okay. Now, I noticed, I, what I would say is, probably would hold my hand up and say sometimes my crack and banter would maybe go too far. Okay. Maybe allowed it to maybe impinge on some individuals, but I, I think it would be, but I don't, I don't think bullied people bully, but I would agree with you. I think people that have an issue, have an issue, Correct. some people, who, if, you've, if they have actually a weakness, yeah. they have an underlying uh, sense of, that they undervalue themselves actually, mm -hmm. so they maybe see somebody and envy what they've got, they envy yeah. the confidence, yeah. they envy the difference. Mm -hmm. Possibly, I, that's right. That's what I think the bullies are. But they have something yeah. lacking in their own yeah. uh, armor. As you said, they'll see you coming in, being bubbly, then they're mm -hmm. at the bring in down a peg, as, yes. as we were doing initially in the, the wee video we done at the start. You know, yes. it's like, you know, I don't like his energy, even though what you're doing is, you know, if you are bubbly, it's a good thing. Yes. But because they don't feel good, I think they just think, well, I want to ruin his day, you know, and bring him down a little bit. So, yeah, I agree with you on that, though. Well, um, I think if, if, if you are being bullied, yeah. uh, don't accept it reach out uh, for help. There will be a number of uh, pieces of literature going across here mm -hmm. and numbers that you can contact if you're in school. Certainly speak to a teacher or a good friend. Certainly talk to your mum and dad. If you're being bullied at work, don't be ashamed because yeah. you're an adult. Happened to me. Happened to him. Yep. Uh, it's not acceptable and there are ways that you can address that and I would I would welcome you to do that. Yep. Um, now, next week, Marty, it'll be Debbie Mahaffey, uh, yes. life coach. That's correct, yes. Um, as I said, I got to know Debbie um, for your family. Um, yeah. It was actually about this time last year and she was telling me what she does and I thought it was brilliant. Uh -huh. so, so next week we're bringing her on and she's going to share what she does, some of her experiences too, um, mm. and what she's went through. So I think it'll be very interesting. Okay, so tune in next week um, for Debbie Mahaffey. So now it's time for our quote of the week. So uh, Robbie, what have we got? Marty, I really, really like this one. Um, it says, what if the kid you bullied at school grew up? and turned out to be the only surgeon who could save your life. There's a message for the bully and the bullied in there, guys. Yeah. Thanks for join joining us. <laughs> <laughs> joining us on Mind Your Bot.